Hello once again my friends. I'm Mark and uh, today we're going to be doing another keyboard mod. I, I mean, surprise, surprise, this is basically what my my life has become, is, <laughs> is just doing work and making keyboards. Um, and so this is the Epo Maker EP84. It's uh, This is entirely stock as of right now on the screen. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning this into the stealthiest keyboard you, you done ever seen. And uh, before you, you get all stinky about it, yes, you'll still see it, yes, but we're going for sound profile. We're going to make this thing real quiet, and that's, that's the goal right now, and also to make it look cool as hell. So if you do see it, in the unlikely event that you do see the stealth keyboard, it's going to look nice, nice and sleek. So what this keyboard comes with is a pretty stock, bog standard, rubberized uh, USB-C cable. I can definitely forgive it for not including some nice braided or coiled cable because, I mean, honestly, the rest of this keyboard is pretty damn premium. And I guess you'll see as the video goes on, but for a budget keyboard, this thing kind of slaps, like, honestly. It also comes with a manual, of course, uh, for all your RGB needs. You can uh, change it up, change the color, change the pattern without having to download any uh, any software, which is a really big selling point for some people. Also, the um, the flippable little extra feet are really quite nice. I've definitely appreciated when when using this during my work week, just kind of being able to adjust the angle and whatnot. And I also kind of understand why they went with the rubberized cable for this little cable management system they have down at the bottom. Um, it can be convenient. It, I, I, it's a little bit annoying to have to press down, but if you're gonna leave it for a long time, then it's definitely a, a nice little inclusion there. And before I move on, uh, I've um, always realized after I made these videos that I always forget to include stuff because I don't have enough B-roll <laughs> to show during the video, but that's okay. This time I recorded extra. So this is one of those clips where I'm just clacking away on the on the stock keyboard and you get to see the RGB. Um, but yeah, the, just a couple of notes. This is the Epo Maker. I, I ordered it with Gateron Yellows from the Epo Maker website. Um, I made a big mistake in doing that, I think, and uh, it took about 30 days to even start to ship out, and then it was delayed when shipped, so it took almost two months for this keyboard to even arrive, um, but I'm very pleased with the results. However, I could have ordered it on Amazon, but that's what I get for not wanting to support Amazon as much as I can, uh, and it probably would have gotten here a lot sooner. However, I mean... Honestly, I'm, I'm very pleased with the results, even though the shipping time was very frustrating. And I would highly recommend this keyboard, especially to like a beginner. We'll see as the video goes on that it actually has stock plate foam and case foam, which is really good. It has pre-lube stabilizers that are clip-in, so they're easily moddable. Um, it's, it's a very, very good stock keyboard, and I would highly recommend it to someone who doesn't want to spend over a hundred on a on a, on a honestly a pretty premium keyboard, despite the, you know, the build quality and tray mount and, and north facing LEDs, if you can deal with all that stuff. But it is a very nice keyboard. I would highly recommend it. Uh, and here we go. We can uh, take it, take it all apart. It, it actually sounds really good, in my opinion. The uh, the stock test. I'm I'm genuinely surprised and and pretty impressed. Of course, I've probably praised this keyboard now too much. Um, still screw them for shipping so late, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's to be expected with keyboard stuff, of course. As as anyone who's gotten into this hobby would should know. I've learned my lesson the hard way. Well, the other thing that's cool is that actually if you wanted to mod this keyboard but you didn't care to change the caps or the switches, you could pretty easily do that uh, without having to do this because you just flick off the back pieces and then you can take this keyboard apart 
pretty easily, which is nice. Um, it actually seems like, um, because I watched some videos on like how to mod this keyboard, it seems like they've actually changed um, how the keyboard is set up to make it easier and more accessible for modding, which is genuinely awesome. Then we take out the clip-in stabilizers. Um, they're not my favorite stabilizers. They do come pre-clipped, which not the clip-in as in clip into the into the plate, but I mean like the clipped bottom, um, which is cool. Uh, it's another nice feature. And they are also pre-lubed and pretty well. Uh, the space bar doesn't sound very good, and we'll see that later on, but um, good job. Good job overall. Um, I didn't have to do a whole lot to make this keyboard sound pretty awesome, so that's cool. So my first major piece of criticism about this board is the the way that you take it apart is a little janky. Like you kind of feel like you're breaking the keyboard to like do this. Um, granted, you don't have to deal with screws, but it's kind of weird since I mean, well, I guess it makes sense since the whole thing is plastic anyway. But still, it's just it feels weird, feels like a little bit strange. Um, however, putting it back together is also really easy because of this. So. I don't know, take it or leave it. It's kind of up to your preference at this point, but I don't really like these little clip thingies that you have to pull out. And whoa, what do we have here? Pre-installed case foam? Wow, good for them, good for them. And good for our ears. So the one thing that I definitely am going to add to this is the tape mod. Uh, it's I'm only gonna do two layers because the case is pretty tight with that amount already. Um, and it actually, in my opinion, contributed quite a bit to the like a more premium feel. Like the the case uh, felt a lot more like compacted in and a lot more tight when I added the the tape mod. So I would highly recommend that if you do get this board. As for what switches to use, we got to get that salsa. We got to get a little spicy, but we want it to be mild. So what we're going with is the Gateron Ink Black Silence V2. These sound and feel pretty awesome I've, I've never used a silent switch before but they feel really cool something about the plate on this board made it feel really weird and mushy to push the the pins in to the play uh, to the pcb i don't know what it was but it just felt strange and off it was very different from anything else i've hot swapped just a heads up and last but certainly not least oh man i've been sitting on these for like months now but i got some sa miami knights keycaps for the board they are uh, double shot abs they feel really good very high quality they were a little on the expensive side and i've seen them for cheaper since i bought them but uh we don't want to talk about that they are they are very nice keycaps and in my opinion they look fantastic um i was a little bit underwhelmed at first but in truth i i've grown they've grown on me a lot more as i've been using them they look very very nice with a little tiny bit of rgb underglow and fast keycap insertion so that we don't go like way over time on this video just so that it uh, stays relatively simple and easy and, and people are still willing to hang out with me while i while i talk about this <laughs> You thought that'd be the end of it, but it's not. I don't like that space bar. We need to fix that space bar. So I'm gonna do my first holy mod. I've never done that before, and it is very annoying and difficult. And if I had to do it for all the stabilizers, I might have I might have Robloxed a little bit, uh, Minecrafted, if you will. Uh, but no, we're going to holy mod those stabilizers at least on the space bar because those are the only ones that I've noticed when typing. Um, and uh, here we go. This is it. We're just going to take a little piece of fabric band-aid, uh, remove the adhesive using some tweezers, then thread it through inside the stabilizer. Also, I clean them myself in the sink. Don't do it without a drain catch because that's dangerous, but that's what I did. 
um and no i did i used the drain catch but anyway we're we gotta use the you gotta do the holy mod so that the stabilizers are less rattly on the space bar and i do think they made a, a pretty okay difference i think it took a little bit longer for the um for the sound to dampen as the the mod set into place but now as i'm typing on this keyboard just doing this video and whatnot it does sound uh, pretty significantly better than the first sound test, but I don't know. Maybe it'll come through in the second sound test. We'll see. And it still obviously makes a lot of noise if you like smash the space bar. But it's still. I just wanted to make sure that they were uh, that that you could still hear it with the with as loud as I could try to make it. But here we go. Holy mod. Obviously, also you have to reload the stabilizers and everything. And uh, thanks again to Rian and uh, Big Ups for helping me cut and and also like remove the adhesives and stuff. That was very helpful. Uh, and it would have been very annoying to do entirely by myself, but we did it. We did it again. And for one little final thing, I actually made a spectrograph of the sound profile. So there's stock and then there's the stealth versions. Um, I think that the the stealth version never really gets above 35 or negative 35 decibels and is much more consistent, especially with the modifiers and the sounds are a lot more muted. Obviously, you get a lot less noise down at the lower ranges. Overall, I think this keyboard turned out really well. It's a very interesting experience to type on, and I'm glad I made something very unique because I actually have another one coming down the pipeline that I'm really, really excited about. Um, it's going to be, in my opinion, hopefully the end game for me, but I'm still going to keep making keyboards for friends and just for fun, like more cheap budget ones, but I'm having one that's going to be a little expensive and I'm really, really excited for that. So for now, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed. I hope I'll see you again. Have a nice rest of your day. That's a weird way to end a video, but yeah, okay, whatever.